broadcast. Hey, the batteries are dead in this backpack, so uh, there's no mm -hmm. yes, seriously, and so there won't be any framing. So I gotta go. Bye. Bo both batteries are flat. Dead. Okay, bye. We're ready. Go ahead. Good morning, this is Chief Chris Butler. Uh, I'm here to announce a murder arrest. Uh, the victims in this case, the first one is Tony Johnson, black male 25, he's deceased. The second victim is Stefan Graham, black male 24, he's still alive. There's three suspects in this case. The first one is Jeremiah Hill, black male 13. The second suspect is Keyshawn Hill, black male 18. The third suspect is Cameron Sneed, He's a black male, 17, and we'll get you the information on their um, criminal histories through the police information officer. On Wednesday, June 10th at 2.50 a.m., police officers were dispatched to 2907 North Main Street, the BP gas station, in reference to a shooting. When police officers arrived, they found the victim deceased, suffering from multiple gunshot wounds, and the second victim was found across the street, suffering from gunshot wounds as well. Homicide Team 6 led by Detective Angel Santiago and Sergeant Waldrop and other team members, responded to the scene and conducted the investigation. The investigation revealed that Tony Johnson wanted to trade a handgun that belonged to him for another handgun. So he and suspect Jeremiah Hill talked on the telephone and arranged to meet at the BP gas station on this early morning hours. The suspects, which I mentioned before, is Jeremiah Hill, Keyshawn Hill, and Cameron Sneed, drove to the gas station. The victims, Tony Johnson and Stefan Graham also drove to the BP gas station in separate cars. The transaction commenced between Tony Johnson and Jeremiah Hill, and for some unknown reason, Jeremiah Hill began to shoot Tony Johnson repeatedly. As this was unfolding, the second victim heard the gunfire and began to flee on foot. At that time, Jeremiah Hill and Cameron Sneed began to fire upon him. And as I mentioned before, he escaped him expected to make a full recovery, he was found across the street. The suspects then got into the car and drove away. Um, this case is still a very active criminal investigation. Um, this case occurred on the 10th. On the 12th uh, of this month, we actually began to uh, break the case open. Uh, a witness cooperated and gave us information. Um, we ended up arresting Jeremiah Hill on the 12th at about 4 a.m. And about 12 hours later, we arrested uh, Keyshawn Hill around 4 p.m. in the afternoon as well. The third suspect, um, Cameron Sneed, he has an act active arrest warrant for murder, and we believe uh, that he has, or he has relatives in Decatur, Georgia. He's described as a black male. His date of birth is 11, 12 of 97. He has black hair, brown eyes. He's 5'11", 155 pounds, and he was last seen wearing dark clothing. We'll provide this photo for you. Um, at the conclusion of this press conference so that you have this. Uh, we need your help by getting the information out. Uh, we need the public's help out. Uh, we do not know where he is at this time. Uh, we believe he leads a transient lifestyle. So if anybody sees him, uh, they can call the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office at non-emergency number, or they can call First Coast Crime Stoppers and be eligible for rewards. As you know, with First Coast Crime Stoppers, uh, tips remain anonymous, and we need your help in locating him. Uh, part of the reason for us not coming to the media initially, after, you know, typically whenever we make uh, these murder arrests, we're, we're quick to let you know what's going on. Unfortunately, with this case, the way the investigation unfolded, we were unable to do that because we've got a third outstanding suspect. Um, because it's such an active criminal investigation, I'm going to be extremely limited um, in the ability to answer your questions just because we have not had a chance to interview Cameron Sneed. We interviewed the two other suspects, and they did provide us some information, but I just can't go into any details. Uh, once we do have Cameron Steed in custody, I'll be more than happy to update you through the police information officer as far as anything. But so I may be limited in what I can tell you. So.
Have you all recovered their, the weapons? I can't answer that. Do you, was there any? Was Tony Johnson doing anything illegal when he brought that gun to that gas station? No. Even in Jer he was selling it to Jeremiah Hill, the thirteen-year-old. I'm not going to get it. I, him wanting to trade a trade a handgun. I, you know, I'm making. A, I'd be making a lot of assumptions on what he knew at the time that he was doing all this. Right. Um, you'll see the pictures of the suspects when we have them. Um, again, he's thirteen years old, so I don't know if that information was known to him. I'm not going to get into the details of him, and uh, I mean, he's a victim. He's been killed at this time, so I don't think that's good to do if somebody has been shot and killed. Chief, we have a question from Periscope. Is this believed to be gang-related? No, there's no gang affiliation to this crime at all. Um, the transient lifestyle of the other person, I mean, so is, where's the parents? Are they not in, in the picture? Was he, I mean, tell me a little bit more about this suspect. Um, I don't have information on as far as who his parents are, who he stays with. Uh, the way it's explained to me, he kind of lays his head in different places. Could be cars, could be hotels, could be staying with friends, could be staying with other relatives. But we've checked all those locations that we know for him and haven't been able to find him. So that's what I mean by transient lifestyle. We don't know where he's is, put his head. Is he believed to be dangerous to the public view concern? Oh, concern? absolutely, I would be. I mean, here you have an individual who um, you know, was involved in a murder um, and then shoots somebody as he's fleeing, absolutely. Yeah. Keyshawn, um, the other brother? And they're their brothers, right? No, they're not. They're cousins. Cousins, okay. Uh, Hill, the other Hill, um, Keyshawn. Keyshawn, how do you say it? Uh, Keyshawn. Keyshawn. I believe that's what it's been. Okay. Is, it, he didn't have, a, did he fire shots at all? Do we know anything no. about his involvement? He was just there. And he's no, he, you know, he's one who had many opportunities to distance himself from this incident uh, and failed to do that. He had many opportunities to not be involved, but he took an active role in the uh, event itself. Chief so that's Butler, what his charges are based on. Yes, sir. Chief Feller and Roger Weeder, First Coast News. I'm just seeing on the report here, it says that uh, Jeremiah's heels mother was cooperative uh, in the investigation, the 15-year-old's mother? Yeah, and you have to excuse me. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what that says. That's, that's, that's what gotcha. it is. So. so at this point, you believe that Jeremiah kind of, in a way, was the ringleader or the main person in, involved in this incident, the 13-year-old? Um, I wouldn't necessarily point him. Obviously, he's the, the one yes, that's just the at uh, large. You know, during the incident itself, he's the one that begins firing upon, um, you know, the victim, Tony Johnson. Uh, but you've got two other suspects that are, that are heavily involved in this incident as well. Where's Jeremiah at right now? Um, Jeremiah, he should be in our, well, he, Jeremiah is, is in our custody, uh, both he and Keyshawn. Uh, Cameron, Cameron they, is the one that's not. Are they in a juvenile detention facility or are they being held here? Um, no, they're being held, well, I don't know where um, Jeremiah is being held. I don't know if he's at the juvenile facility or if he's already been transferred over to the, uh, he's at the juvenile facility, he's at the juvenile facility. And his, uh, Keyshawn, I believe, is 18 years old, so he should be here at our pre child detention facility. And looking at this, I mean, you talked about his mother cooperating, but she was the one. Was she the witness or the tip or that you got that you felt really broke this case, his mom? I can't answer that for you right now. Sorry. Any other questions? Chief, can you say what kind of guns they, they were wanting to exchange? Handgun, were handguns, productive handguns? Can't answer that right now. Um, where, where was the victim that was deceased shot? Because it's 13 year old that y'all accusing with. It. Was it? Was he intentionally killing the guy or was he just shooting him? I mean, where was he shot? Can you? Um, I can't answer that either right now. Uh, without having the third suspect in custody, I don't want to go into any details about really much of anything. Uh, do you feel confident on finding this third suspect with the information you currently have? Oh, absolutely. Yes, we do. do you, so you have some leads? Uh, we're, good we're, we've been working leads throughout. Um, you know, some of the traditional mechanisms that we used haven't been as successful as we would like. Uh, but, uh, you know, we need the public's help because he could have possibly fled to uh, Decatur, Georgia. No or gang affiliation. There. It could be anywhere. Uh, <coughs> my, uh, okay. So here it talks about him confessing to shooting this victim. How important was that when it, in this investigation? Oh, extremely, about that? extremely important. I mean, he, you know, that's what he did. He confessed. Um, but I can't go into the details of it. Yeah, that's extremely important. And it's extremely helpful for us to kind of put everything together. Was there surveillance footage? Uh, uh, there is. Will that be released? No. Um, no. no. Any other questions? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Right. Yeah, I'm going to email it out. And, or they can get, yeah, just leave it. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. Or right. Let me, hold on, let me turn this off.